Did you feel pressure to dance? I did. I was no. like, now I need to move. No, then I'm, you know. it's totally fine. It's good to see you. Nice now, to see you too. Because Adam calls you Bihati all the time. Yeah. Or Bahati. But it's Biati. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Prince Lou. Yes. All right. I know. So uh, you, this is your first time here. We know each other. We're friends. Yes. But uh, it's, it's, and, and uh, I think we should know, everyone should know that I named your first child. Yeah, she did. I did. Yeah. And, and you this were... is the first time I'm here. I yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. So, so Dusty is uh, the name that Dusty Rose. I thought that was a sweet name, and you were very against it. And... You know, I, Adam brought it to me pretty early on in my pregnancy, and he was like, Ellen came up with this amazing name, Dusty, and I love Dusty Springfield, so I know, obviously, we know the name, and, and I was like, Dusty? Like, that is not, my parents are gonna think it's like a piece of dust. They're Afrikaans, they're not English, English is not their first language. Dusty, no way. No, no, no way. And then as the months went by and the belly grew and the name kept coming in and out, she, uh, she was born and she was a Dusty. She's Thanks a Dusty. Ellen. <laughs> yep, she looks like a Dusty. And now the second child um, <laughs> is, uh, she's, I did not name her. Um, and you'll have, you'll have many more. Adam, yeah. He wants like five. Yeah, he wants five. Yes. And I, th I thought I wanted five, but now I think maybe like three or four will be good. You're backing up? I'm backing just, just by one. Yeah. You know, it, Adam can't have everything. No, he can't. <laughs> he has everything. I'm carrying them, you Yes. Know? But, but you don't mind. You like, you, you like being a mom. I do. Yeah, you're, yeah. A, good, you're a good mom. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's talk about the, uh, so you're from Namibia. Namibia, and, yes. Uh, and so you went back, this is the first time in a long time to go back to, to try to help out with the black rhinos. Explain what's happening there. So Ginger, who's backstage here, um, contacted me and she's with Save the Rhino Trust Namibia. And, you know, it made sense for me to kind of be part of this organization because I was from, I'm from Namibia, my parents still live there. And I think as a Namibian and as um, someone who loves animals and, and want to make a change, I just heard, and we all know poaching is going on, we all know, you know, devastating stuff that's happening, but I just really wanted to join and make a difference, use my voice to let people know, spread awareness, um, so, I joined SRT and we went down there and we had a crazy trip. We met amazing people doing incredible things on the ground for these animals. And um, like you're the gorillas too. Yeah. Um, when you were growing up, did you see them just like, I mean, I think people have this idea, like I've been to Africa, to South Africa and to Kenya and different countries, but you, people just think they're just running around. Did you see rhinos just running around? Yeah. Um, not as much as we should see them. Mm -hmm. um, especially the black rhino, they're very um, solitary animals. And through poaching, their numbers have declined from the 60s to the 90s by 98%, which is crazy. Yeah, and they're incredible creatures. And it, explain why people, are, what, what they're doing, why they're poaching them. Um, so they're poaching them for, for their horn, which is keratin, it's hair. Um, a lot of Asian countries believe that it is... Um, it's a status if you have, you know, it's a form of status or, you know, and then also medicinal. So they think it will cure anything from a headache to cancer, which is not true. Not true. Um, not true. It's basically nails. Nail. Like, a, it, like yeah. your nails grow and, yes. and they kill these animals to get the horn. Yeah. Because you can't just chop off the horn anyway, right? Um, they do dehorning now, so they'll take a little bit of the horn off um, to save them, but a lot of times, I mean, it's, it's not controversial, but a lot of people believe in it, and there's 50-50, yeah. you know? Right. Um, but, yeah, they chop off the horns and let the animal basically bleed to death and then um, sell it on the black market because it's illegal. You know, you're not supposed to do it, but right. it's still going on. It's just really sad, and I feel like we as human beings are doing this and we're poaching them, and we can stop it. Yeah. So we can't be the reason why they go extinct. Right. I think I think also educating the younger generation because Absolutely. that the, that myth that it that it cures cancer and cures all kinds yeah. when it does not do that. Yeah, I think the youth. For me, I really wanted to inspire the young people to look around them. And for me, like I keep saying, but my journey started in Africa because that's where I'm from, and Namibia is where I grew up. But um, the youth is what we need. We need 
the louder we can be and the more we can band together. And I think the younger generation needs to say, say it stops here. Yeah. It stops now. We don't do this anymore. Um, these animals have a right to be on the planet just as we do. So, yeah. Yeah, good. All right. Uh, we're going to be back more with Bihati after this. We're back with Bihati. Bihati? Bihati? <laughs> I'm just going to call you B. Um, Thank you. All right, so uh, this, I, gave, uh, I gave Adam a really hard time about this, and you know this. So J Jake Gyllenhaal watched my special on Netflix, uh, was trying to get in touch with me, didn't have my number, so he writes to Adam, knowing Adam and I are friends, saying, please tell Ellen how much I loved her Netflix special. Now, I never heard that until Jake did the show, because Adam never told me, because Adam was embarrassed that Adam didn't watch my special. Yes. So instead of watching my special, because Jake says it's great, he just doesn't watch it and doesn't tell me. <laughs> and so finally, I gave him such a hard time he watched it. Have you watched it yet? I have. OK, good. All right. Like three days ago. OK. Because <laughs> you knew you were doing the show? And well, I knew bad. I was doing it. Adam, Adam had such a, he was like, oh my gosh, I need to watch it. I need to watch it. And so finally, when he watched it, I was with the kids out. And I was like, oh, I have to watch it because you know, she's going to ask you and me. And then I'm not going to know what they're talking about. And then I'm going to be, you know. Um, so I watched it. And it is unbelievable. Well, thanks. That's all I want to hear. Um, <laughs> very relatable. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's very relatable, isn't it's very it? Very relatable. All right, so uh, for your next Africa trip, you, you know, you're a model and a, a Victoria's Secret model, so we wanted to give you something that, that you could, you know, it'll, it'll feel at home for you okay. when you go on your next <laughs> Africa Is it a, is it a? Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, is it a backpack? <laughs> it's a backpack. Really come in handy. It will come in handy. And you know what? The good news is you won't stand out at all. Not at You'll all. You'll just be there. The animals won't be scared. No, that will really go tracking yeah. uh, it's, real subtly. It's great. And you can check. There's, I think there's a compass or a compact or something there. Anyway, go to our website to find out how you can support Save the Rhino Trust. I want to thank Biati, Prinsloo, Ali Wong, Willa Amai. I'll see you tomorrow. Be kind to one another. Bye bye.